Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale U25B locomotive from Bowser. This is one of a number of models lent to me by fellow modeler Mark Ween so that I could review them. Since these aren't my models, I won't be doing the rip track segment where I would normally fix any issues like coupler height or wheel gauge that might come up. Otherwise, this will be just like any other product review. The model is decorated in the Southern Pacific Bicentennial scheme. Bowser offers this model in two versions. The MSRP for the most recent run of DCC Ready Bowser U25Bs that I could find online was $199.95. The MSRP for the DCC and sound equipped version is $299.95. I should mention that I was not able to find any MSRP info for this particular paint scheme, but the MSRPs for all the Bowser U25Bs I did find were consistent. Mark purchased his sound equipped locomotive in September 2019 for $269.95 from Western Depot. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The model comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside there are two sheets of paper, one with DCC information and another with lubrication instructions. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the locomotive. Two screws secure the model to the bottom part of the cradle. Personally, I dislike screw boxes because it makes it more difficult to remove the model from the packaging and because the packaging will often not protect the model unless it's screwed down. The screws fall out easily once the model is removed from the cradle, so be sure not to lose them if you intend to reuse the box. Mark's model came with one brake cylinder missing. According to Mark, Western Depot contacted Bowser and sent a replacement brake cylinder, but it is not paint matched. It's good that Bowser replaced the part, but a new model should not arrive with broken or missing pieces, so I'm taking 5 points. Though I dislike the screws, this is an adequate box that should protect the model for storage and transport. According to the Southern Pacific Diesel Locomotive Compendium, Volume 2, SP-6800 was built in 1963. SP took delivery of 22 U25B units that year and designated them Class GF-425-2. SP also had 6 U25Bs delivered in 1962 and another 40 that entered service in 1964. All of the units were rated at 2500 horsepower. Unit 6800 was originally numbered 7508 and then renumbered 6708 in 1965. In an effort to reduce maintenance costs, SP rebuilt two units in 1975 and 1976, numbering them 6800 and 6801 and calling them U25BEs. The units received many internal upgrades as well as some new sheet metal in various places on the outside. SP-6800 was one of three diesels to wear the special SP Bicentennial paint scheme, along with GP40P-2-3197 and Cotton Belt ST45T-2-9389. SP did not continue the U25B rebuild program, so 6800 and 6801 were the only U25BEs on the roster. These locomotives spent most of their working lives in Southern California. Both of these units were downgraded from road service by 1977 or 78. According to the compendium, in 1979, 6800 was renumbered 3100. I found a photo online dated 1981 that shows the unit still in bicentennial colors with the same 6800 number, but I suspect that the date of this photo might not be accurate. This unit, along with sister unit 3101, were reclassified as switchers and often worked in LA to West Colton shuttle service. Both the U25BE units were placed in storage by 1985. The model as decorated is most appropriate for the 1975 to 1979 time period. While 3101 was scrapped, 3100 was preserved and resides today at the Southern California Railway Museum in Paris, California in standard SP scarlet and gray colors. The model captures the overall look of the real SP6800, but there are some inaccuracies. The model best represents a generic U25B. As part of the upgrade program, SP rebuilt portions of the long hood with a removable section above the prime mover and shorter hood doors. The hood doors should all be the same height, not taller in the middle as they are in the model. The fuel filler cap and gauge are in the wrong place. They should be near the front end of the fuel tank. Something about the proportions of the pilot walkways seems off, too. They're very narrow, barely big enough for an HO scale figure. Photos make it look like there should be more space between the railings and the end of the car body. There are some other small discrepancies as well. Correcting just the hood door arrangement would require major surgery and probably entail a complete repaint. Fixing that along with the other detail issues would be a big project, so I'm taking 10 points. The paint on the engine is opaque and thin enough not to obscure detail. The lettering is crisp, though elements within the round United States Savings Bond logo on the sides are a little out of alignment. Also disappointing is the ladder on the fireman's side, which is chunky and doesn't really reproduce the more delicate look of the real thing. 
Like a lot of model locomotives, this one has plastic handrail stanchions. Most of them are straight, which is good. They are somewhat flexible and look like they should stand up to moderate handling. The grills on the sides appear to be photo etched and there's detail behind them, which is subtle but looks really good. The cab has nicely done separately applied windshield wipers, but lacks the sunshades and armrests found on the real unit. These things could be added with aftermarket parts if desired. The cab also lacks an interior, something a lot of other models in this price range have. In front, the light configuration is correct for 6800, which had a high-mounted headlight. The lower light housing had an oscillating light on one side and a red emergency light on the other. The pilot has uncoupling levers and air hoses. In back, the model has a headlight and no oscillating lights, which is also correct for 6800. Some of SP's non-rebuilt U25Bs had a different light configuration in the rear. Like the prototype units, on top the model is fairly plain. The horn and bell are in their correct locations for SP6800. The exhaust stack has some grill detail molded into the top. Unlike the side grills, the radiator grills on top appear to be molded on, though they have very nice depth. Underneath, the details are fairly sparse. The model lacks undersill plumbing, a speed recorder, and other details that are common on models in this price range. All of the wheels pick up current and all the axles are powered. I feel like this model would have been state of the art in 1995. Athern Scale Trains and others are producing models in this price range that not only have more detail in general, but they have unit specific detail. For that reason, I think this model is not as good of a value for the price, so I'm taking five points. The engine has KD couplers on both ends. The front coupler is at the correct height. The rear coupler is also correct. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is little to no noticeable body wobble. The locomotive weighs 14.6 ounces. Drawbar pull peaked at 3.3 ounces on my force gauge. This is a little better than the 2.5 ounce drawbar pull I've measured on many HO scale diesels. The model has a look sound select DCC and sound decoder. Not all the function key assignments on the instruction sheet match the way the locomotive is actually programmed. I had to experiment to find what works. F0 turns on the headlights and front number boards. The headlights are directional. The front headlight is on when the model is set to move forward, and the rear headlight is on when the model is set to move backwards. The number boards stay on regardless of direction, so they are independently lit. It should be possible to reprogram them to operate on a separate function key the way the instructions say they do. F5 turns on the class lights on both ends of the model. F7 turns on the oscillating light. Really only the white lens should be on. The red lens is an emergency light. It looks like both are lit from the same source, so the model would need to be modified to make them work independently as they would on the real locomotive. F2 sounds the horn. F1 rings the bell. F4 turns on the dynamic brake sounds. The model runs pretty smoothly. Let's see what we've got. The engine is missing a brake cylinder, so I took five points in the packaging category. The hood doors are at the wrong height, which would require a lot of work to fix, and there are several other detail issues, so I took 10 points in the prototype accuracy category. The model has an overall lower level of detail than many other models in the same price range, so I took five points in the paint and detail category. That leaves us with a total of 80 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B- on a report card. This model gets a green signal. Overall, I think this is a pretty nice model if you're willing to put up with the detail shortcomings. If you're looking for some bicentennial era SP power for your layout, then I think you might like it. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.